Hey everyone, um, so this is the last video for uh, abnormal disorders and mental mental illness, um, which we're going to talk about some schizophrenia, schizophrenic disorders and somatic disorders. Uh, so we'll get into that uh, pretty quick, only about seven slides. So go ahead and jump into it. Um, try to get this done quick. Uh, so somatic disorders, these are disorders that are characterized by when you have physical complaints or physical pain or conditions um, that uh, may or may not actually be caused by something physical. Um, and sometimes the mind may be causing it um, rather than the body. Uh, so these are basically when the mind and the body are, there's kind of a disconnect and a, and a, and a conflict between them, uh, sometimes due to uh, mental illness. So. Uh, physical complaints and conditions that result in uh, really significant distress and impairment. Um, <clears throat> so somatic symptom disorder, this is when someone who, uh, or this is someone who basically has physical issues, pain, uh, you know, twitches, so whatever, uh, you know, anything physical in the body um, that prevents normal functioning, but you know, they, but there may not be a medical cause to it. So they may have back pain with nothing actually being hurt in the back, or they may have, um, you know, a constant kind of uh, sharp pain without anything in the body actually causing that sharp pain. Um, so there may not actually be a medical cause to it. Um, so in other words, the something something is causing it either in the mind or the body that cannot be diagnosed. Um, usually this is someone who uh, um, you know, someone who kind of suffers from or not su suffers, not the right word, but someone who um, is kind of exaggerated about their concern for their health. So they're, they're constantly worried. They may, have something wrong with them. It's not the same thing as a hypochondriac. We're going to get to that later. But um, in other words, they may go to co constantly go to doctors, just different doctors left and right to make sure that uh, they're, they're healthy, or they may spend a ton of time researching stuff that they don't even have. Um, but they think they do because of the, the, the symptoms that they may be experiencing. So uh, somatic symptom disorder is a, not close to the same thing as, as someone who's a hypochondriac, but not, but not exactly the same thing. Um, now conversion disorder, this one's kind of, this one's really interesting. This is, this is when someone who, someone has uh, paralysis, blindness, deafness, some type of like really serious physical deficiency with no physical cause as to why it's happening. So this would be someone who, um, goes blind, but they don't know why, like their, their eyes are perfectly healthy or they are per paralyzed because, uh, yeah, and there's no physical cause as to why. Um, usually this is sometimes linked to trauma in some way, not physical trauma, but more psychological trauma. Um, so there's that. And, and, and Sometimes it goes away and sometimes it doesn't and it's and, and we don't know why they have no idea why it's happening. No idea what's what's going on. It's really, really kind of crazy if you look it up. I mean, it's just it's really, really interesting as to our body can literally just kind of shut something down because of a psychological thing. Um, and it's, it's really crazy. Um, OK, I, I talked about hypochondriac. So that's what hypochondriasis is. This is when someone who believes that really minor things are, are symptoms of something very serious. So someone who might have a stomach ache and rather than thinking, oh, maybe they ate too much for lunch, they're thinking, oh my gosh, I have stomach cancer. And they, and that drives their behavior from that point forward. Um, I have an, I have a family member who is a hypochondriac and it's, it's tough. It's interesting. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Um, and, and, so it's someone, it, they just constantly worry and it causes them to be like constantly on edge about, you know, what, what's wrong today? Like, what, you know, what, what does this small thing mean? What does this headache mean? Am I, you know, am I dehydrated or do I have a brain tumor? Like, you know, that, that's basically what their mind goes to. Um, and then body dysmorphic disorder. This is, um, 
when someone becomes obsessed with um, what they perceive to be a flaw in their physical appearance, whether or not it even is. Um, in this, again, it can be it can be weight, it can be hair loss, it can be um, like it says there, like wrinkles, size or shape of anything. I mean, it's just and and then that drives their behavior. A, a striking number of celebrities have this. Um, you know, some of you may roll your eyes at that, but um, it, it, it's true. I mean, a lot of them uh, and, and and people that you would look at and be like, there's no flaw on that person, but they perceive themselves to have a flaw. And it drives their behavior and causes mental issues like anxiety, stress, maybe even depression. Um, and it may drive to negative behaviors like eating disorders or, or, or plastic surgery or whatever. Um, so that's body dysmorphic disorder. And then lastly, the last category is schizophrenia. And this is probably the most dangerous of the mental is, uh, dis, no, excuse me. This is probably the most dangerous of the mental illnesses because it, usually causes a break with reality in some way. And when someone has a break with reality, they're not entirely sure what's happening. And that can be dangerous to themselves or the people around them. So usually these things have to be present in schizophrenia uh, or for in order for something to be uh, a schizophrenia diagnosis. Usually they have delusional beliefs um, where they think that, uh, you know, something's happening that is completely far-fetched and not true. Uh, a lot of times paranoid schizophrenics, uh, which we'll get into in just a minute as to what that means. Paranoid schizophrenics believe they're being followed all the time or persecuted or hunted. And and it causes them to be constantly be on edge and in some cases take action against who they think is, is pursuing them. Um, or they believe that they're in a plot that, you know, like you would read about in a movie or something. They or a book and they they think they're in, involved in it. Um, so there's that. Hallucinations, usually uh, distorted perceptions. This can be visual or usually they're auditory. Usually they hear, they usually hear voices. Um, uh, people who are schizophrenic usually have that happen. Um, disorganized thought and speech. Usually when they talk, it doesn't make sense to us, um, but it makes perfect sense to them. Uh, so there's that. Um, and then emotional and behavioral disturbances. So obviously, um, inappropriate reactions to un, even vi violent or even completely emotionless reactions as well um, can be examples. Uh, so here are the, the kind of five types of schizophrenia. Um, there's disorganized, which is when someone has very bizarre behavior, uh, but it doesn't necessarily fall into one category. Um, so it's very disorganized. Their, their thoughts, their, their speech, their behavior, it's all very disorganized. Um, the, the conversations may be with someone else or it may be with the voices in the, that they have. Um, so it's, it's a very, you know, kind of very disorganized, both in thought and action. Catatonic is when someone may alternate between a catatonic state, which is essentially being like, you know, kind of in a coma almost, but alive. So they're mute, they're immobile, they don't respond to anything. And then they switch between like that and an overly active state, which would be like, you know, a manic state. Uh, which, uh, you know, can become very, uh, you know, you know, the opposite of, of, like I said, the catatonic state. And it can alternate between that and become a very, you know, in some cases, serious issue. Like I said, paranoid schizophrenics, extreme suspicion is complex delusions. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, people with paranoid schizophrenia believe that they're, you know, I, I read about one, a guy, a guy one time who was a paranoid schizophrenic who believed that, the voices that he was hearing were voices from God and that the God was telling him to, you know, find and assassinate uh, Osama bin Laden. The problem with that is that he lived in Cleveland um, and Osama bin Laden did not. So he would break into these buildings searching for Osama bin Laden and, and um, you know, call and, and basically he would get arrested and, thrown in jail and they would treat him and he would be okay during jail. Cause he had, you know, he had treatment and counseling and things like that. And then he'd get released and do the same thing after he ran out of medication. It was just this weird, vicious cycle. And he, but that's what paranoid schizophrenia is. You believe you're in this kind of, you, you're very suspicious of people. You believe you're being followed. You believe you're in a part of this 
crazy plot or whatever and it has these very complex delusions attached to it as well and usually the voices and the breaks with reality drive that um undifferentiated schizophrenia this is when it's obvious that a person has schizophrenia but they don't meet the criteria for paranoid or catatonic or disorganized or whatever um and then also residual schizophrenia is when you may have you may have symptoms of of schizophrenia, but they're not as, um, you know, they're not as pronounced as the others. So you may uh, have the the voices, but they're not as constant or as um, as 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 severe as you would with with other schizophrenia, schiz, no, other schizophrenia diagnoses, but. It's still symptoms of schizophrenia, so it falls under a category. It's just not as severe as the others. Okay, so I think that's it. Yep, that's it. So that's all for this uh, for this first topic of abnormal psych. The next one is on treatment and uh, therapies, and that'll be next week. So we'll see you guys then. Hope you have a good weekend, um, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.